we're going to dub stuff from the cassette to the reel-to-reel. -reel. Then, as we do the manipulations and stuff, we will send it, copy it again, back from the reel-to-reel -to, -reel to the cassette. Then I'll put this on there. Tighten this. And yeah, we'll go up there, around there. By the capstan. All right. There we go. I've got two tapes here. One is the sound effects tape, the source. This would be your project two. Then we've got a blank one that you're going to record the project on. This is where we're going to record stuff on. So we're going to start with this one, the sound effects tape. I want to patch this so that the output of one of the tracks on the cassette recorder goes into one of the tracks here. We're going to find on the outputs of the patch bay, I'm going to look for cassette, cassette left. The other one goes to an input, and in this case, I'm going to go into four track one input. That's track one of the four track input. Push play on the tape, go to input on the reel to reel for my output select, and it should show up on the meter. There it is. I want to hear what I'm doing. So, next step is I'm going to take the output of the reel to reel, put it into the mixer, and then from there into the speakers. We're going to take another cable. And then we're going to come out from track one on the four track to mixer channel one input. Coming into the mixer, it's coming in through here. So I can turn this up. I need to assign it to a submaster. Then subs one and two, let's put one of them on the left and the other one on the right. And then let's turn the main mix up. And there we hear our sound effects coming off the tape. I have this all set up. I've got it coming out of the tape, going into the reel to reel machine, and then a copy of that is being sent after it goes through the reel to reel machine into the mixer and out the speakers so I can hear what's going on. So I'm just going to dub all of the first four or five sound effects from this tape onto this tape. Here's the thing where, where I wanted to think ahead. If I'm going to do a manipulation of speed, of lowering the speed, I have to record it in high speed. If I record it in low speed, then the only manipulation I can do is speeding it up. And I don't want to do that. I want to go the other way. I'll hit play on here. And record on here. Okay. That should be all we need this tape for now. Okay. So now I can turn off the function select here because I'm no longer recording. And I'll put this on repro so now it should play back what we just recorded. Here we go. So there's what we just recorded. I'm going to have to record the original sound at its normal speed and then do the slowed down version. So, I'm going to get my blank tape ready, put this in here, make sure it's rewound. Now we've got to change some patches around, because now we're going the other direction. We're, we're just going to make it a mirror image of what it used to be. I'm just going to start over from scratch with these patch cables. I want to go from the output of the 4-track, and I want to go into the input of the cassette. And again, I'm going to use left. That's kind of the default to use. We're going to take the output of the cassette and bring that into mixer channel 1. So now the signal path goes like this. It plays back off of the reel-to-reel -reel machine, goes into right, directly from the reel-to-reel -reel into the cassette, and the cassette player records that onto tape and at the same time echoes back a copy of that signal out through the exact same signal path that we had in the mixer from before. So I shouldn't have to change anything on the mixer because I changed the, the patches. On this cassette player, here we have a switch that says input or auto. This is somewhat similar to uh, repro or input on here, except it's either input, when this one's on input, or when it's on auto, it will automatically swap to the input mode when you're recording and the repro mode when you're playing back. And let's rewind this to just before the knocking. I want to put the normal knock. I'm going to start this recording. Start this one recording. Wait for it to get past the plastic leader tape on the cassette. Now I'll hit play on here. There it goes. I'll stop that one. Okay, we're ready to do the manipulation. So I'm going to hit speed, change it to low speed. And yes, exactly. And I'm going to press record on the tape and play on this one. Oops. Okay. 
Um, so there's our first manipulation. We've done parts one and two. Next up, we have a reversal. What I want to do is the hanging up sound. Not the telephone itself, but the hanging up sound. There it is. So I'm going to press record on here. Play on here. Perfect. Now comes the reversal, and there are some interesting things that happen here. First of all, to get a reversal, we just want the tape to move in the opposite direction over the heads. So the way we can do this is we can just take the tape off of here, swap the reels around, and we will end up with the tape moving the opposite direction. Now there is one thing in there that complicates this process, and this is the way that the tracks are recorded onto the tape. Um, when it records tracks, it's very much like an analogy of lanes on a freeway. Um, each track is on one physical section of the tape, like let's say um, they're side by side like this. So you got like track one, track two, track three, track, track three, track four. When we swap it around, it's now four, three, two, one. Okay, so what used to be playing off of track one is now going to be playing off of track four. So we need to make a change in the patch bay. I'll show you what that is. Again, I'm gonna turn the main mix all the way down before I make changes just to make sure there are no pops or clicks. Our signal is coming out of four track, track one. Instead of track one, it's going to be coming out of track four now because we have reversed the tape. That's the only change you need to make for this. And you'll just need to put it back when you do the last manipulation where again you're moving forwards. There it is, right there. That's really cool. Okay, we'll go record and play on here. And then play on here. And that was the reversed phone hanging up. Okay, let's take this tape off again and put it back to uh, forwards. The last manipulation that we're going to do is an a pitch envelope change. And if you remember how we talked about envelopes, how they could be amplitude or pitch or whatever, you know that to make a pitch envelope, we just have to vary the pitch over time. You want to choose a sound that has a fairly constant tone. And in this case, I want the phone ringing because that's an easy to hear pitch. And if it changes over time, it'll be very obvious and it'll create a cool effect. This should all still be set up from before, except for one thing. I'm going to have to turn this down, swap this back to track one because now we've flipped the, the lanes on the tape back to the way they were at the beginning. So we're on track one again. Okay. All I have to do is do number five there, original sound for pitch envelope change. So I just want to get that telephone sound onto tape. I should be in the right spot. I'm just going to double check. Okay, that's what I needed. Okay, so we'll hit record and play on here. And play on here. That's all we need. Then I'll rewind this. And when I played it the first time, let's let's I want to draw your attention to this pitch control knob. When we played it back, back the first time, this was pushed in, which meant that the tape recorder was locked to standard pitch, the standard speed of seven and a half or fifteen inches of tape per second. If I pull this out and press play, I can make it go slower. Faster. And there's your pitch envelope. Let's rewind the tape. I turn up the master volume, and here we go. So there is a completed project five.